Okay, back to this fender. You can see this stuff all is cleaned off of it, and it's actually a pretty good fender. I don't know what all these layers of filler were. There's some little dings here, you know, we got a spot here, some little dings there, some here. But all in all, pretty good fender. We've got some emblem holes, bondo shut here that went welded. I'll knock those out and weld them. But the fender looks pretty good under all that stuff. I don't know what people think when they coat a piece of sheet metal with so many layers and build up. I just don't get it. Then at the bottom, of course, some more special stuff. After I got all the white paint up that was down here over top of the red, this is what I found underneath. Some black substance. Who knows what this stuff is? As you can see, it's kind of sticky, gummy. Will not come off with a sander. Chemicals don't want to touch it. So, we get the grinder out. And it just takes it off because it's heating it up and rolling it off of there. So, lovely stuff, time consuming. Looks like we've got a dent down here. That could have been because this fender was dropped. The dent runs right here, like this corner was, was dropped on this corner. We'll see. Straighten that out. But this is what you find underneath. More time. All right, more surprises on this fender. I should have known. Emblem holes, molding holes. This fender was on a GTO. Guess what? Not a GTO fender. <coughs> That's what these were dinged in for. They just like just dents. No, they were molding holes. Tempest Le Mans had a molding up here. I put this fender on a GTO and they just bonded these shut. Some Duroglass on them. Of course, they pinged them down. Same way on these. They weren't pinged in, thank goodness. They were just filled with bondo. That one. See, you got all this gooey stuff off of this fender bottom. It was pushed in a little bit here for whatever reason. There you go. Typical GM right where the brace is. Brace is rusted out on the back side too. Good thing I stripped this fender because if I had a paint over the top of this, it wouldn't have been too long. It just would have been bubbling back through the bottom. So like I said, the rest of the fender actually looks pretty straight. I, I don't know why they had all that filler, all those layers and layers on it. There's some dings here. Here's a ding right here on this lip. <coughs> I've already straightened out the underside of this and I'll flip this back over and I'll show you what people do on these. They don't know how to get the inner the fender off of the inner fenders. So they end up putting screwdrivers up in here and prying the inner fender out here. All of these are just bent all to hell. I hate redoing someone else's work. Fortunately that's what a lot of this is. Here's that inner brace. Exactly where the outer one's rusty. Cut that out and throw a new piece in there on the outside too. And we'll weld all these trim holes shut. Do them the right way. Four on the top of the fender. Three here for the molding. I'll double check on this one. I don't know if he needs this one or not. I don't think so, but I'll double check on that. And we have to weld that shut too. Alright, there you go. All right, we're going to do another little video on this fender here. You know, these again, this is some of the things that folks just don't get. Where are you supposed to stop on this? You can see this inside. It was poorly done. Here's rust down here. It's just surface stuff, and, you know, you won't really see it once the car is back together. Where do, you where do you stop as a shop owner? What's the quality work do you want to do? And then, of course, someone used some kind of paint up here. See what it did? Well, can see it all wrinkled up? Look at all this. I can't paint over top of that. This is all supposed to be body color. See some, I think this fender is originally white. See some of the original white coming through here. All the way back through here in all this contour area. You can imagine how long it's going to take me to try to clean it up enough that I know I can paint over it. Gracious, glorious, I tell you. And it's all time. Some shops work on an hourly rate. 
I have an hourly rate for my shop. When I do large jobs like this, this particular car, I usually give a job quote. This is where you run into trouble. Am I supposed to leave that? Leave that scale in there? We know what it's going to do. It's just a matter of time. It's where you run into issues. It's always hard to explain why that job quote has to go up. Unforeseen like this. You know, things like these holes I talked about, unforeseen. Time keeps adding up. All right, there you go.